Caden Davis will start us off. Xavier Leggett to receive. And Leggett wants to bring it out. Got a seam. And Leggett takes a pass to 30. And here he goes down the sideline. What a start for the Gamecocks. Xavier Leggett takes it to the house. that for momentum are you kidding me what a way to start well you mentioned it nowadays that ball goes in the end zone it's almost a given that you take a knee there Leggett takes a risk taking it out and the risk pays off thought he almost went out of bounds there at the sideline but he stays in what a way to start put that under the column Beamer ball 2.0 one of the most efficient special teams in the country, third in the nation. And they're already kicking an extra point early. This is Mitch Jeter. And South Carolina is up 7-0, and they have a stranglehold on momentum. And this is not just about one kickoff return. This goes back to the win on the road against Kentucky and what Shane Beamer has built here. Yeah, the culture that he's building here, the culture of aggressiveness, of confidence, and that's what you saw, taking that ball out of the end zone to start the game against a team that you haven't beaten in a while. And just an unbelievable job by Leggett keeping his feet there. It's a first kickoff return for a touchdown for South Carolina since Debo Samuel did it against Ole Miss in 2018. That portended a win for the Gamecocks against the Rebels. Spencer Rattler says that's an easy way to get points on the board. Man, what a start, and what a feeling for Leggett. Well, remember how the Kentucky game started, too, with the big defensive play, and that's two games in a row that South Carolina has come out the gates hot. It is absolutely bananas on the field in this place right now. And you mentioned, Cole, what is the pulse, the temperature of this Texas A&M team coming off the loss last week against Alabama? How about now? Devon Chain may have the answer. He's one of the most electric players in the SEC. He will receive this kick from Mitch Jeter. Chain will not have a chance for a return. 14 seconds in, South Carolina is up 7-0. And we mentioned Texas A&M playing with a banged-up quarterback. Haynes King told us that he didn't get a chance to get away for his bye week. He was in the trainer's room getting treatment. Now, he had a good game against Alabama. He threw for 253, and they were a threat with the big play. Yeah, and unsure what the injury is, but Cole will get into it. This offensive line for Texas A&M is really banged up as well, so something to watch. South Carolina loves to bring pressure. You got a quarterback that is nursing some kind of injury and a banged up offensive line. Keep an eye on that. A chain is his running back, Max Wright, the tight end. And we're going to flag before the snap and movement on AM. This is a young offensive line. They got even younger tonight, Cole. Three freshmen starting for AM up front. And this is not the environment to try to learn on the go, fellas. I'm down here right by the student section, and it is loud. Communication will be an issue for Texas AM this entire evening. Freshman left tackle, freshman left guard, freshman center for Jimbo squad. King on the rollout, a little bit low and incomplete. Well, that's one thing that Jimbo Fisher mentioned with the youth and offensive line, the injuries. They want to get Haynes King outside the pocket, move the launch point. The problem is... He already looks a little hobbled. Getting outside the pocket there on that throw, a little ginger, gingerly on one of his feet. Keep an eye on that as it evolves, but maybe not have the mobility that he's used to have. They'll roll him again, and this is complete to Chase Lane, and he gets stopped. You thought it was loud earlier. They'll get louder on this third down. Darius rushed the stop. King, 
had time, lobs it, and that is caught by Evan Stewart. The sensational freshman takes it to midfield with a gain of 25. Boy, South Carolina runs two games up front, two big twists. One of them hits home right as Haynes King lets that go, but it's a great job of putting enough air on it and letting it go early enough that Stewart had an ability to adjust, and this is a heck of a catch in traffic by the true freshman Stewart that is so talented, he's gonna be fun to watch. Stewart, freshman from Frisco, eighth in the league in receiving yards per game. King pulls it back and lets it go. That is intercepted! Taken away by Darius Rush! A convoy in front! And he's finally shoved out of bounds by A.J. 63-yard return on the first pick of the year for Darius Rush. Get the shot to Yule Keith Brown there, and he comes back late to the comeback as a quarterback. When that shot is not there, you got to peek first. That's a long throw. You got to make sure that you leave it outside and you throw it early enough. A little late, hung on that double move, one second too long. Marshawn Lloyd is a tailback. Spencer Rattler having to scramble and make it back to the line of scrimmage. So Rattler, the Oklahoma transfer, it took him a little while to find his legs in Marcus Satterfield's offense. And he told us yesterday, yeah, this is way more complicated than I had ever run in my life. But now he's played really good ball lately. Last three games, 75% completion rate. Yeah, they've simplified things for him. At Oklahoma, it was really simple. Came into a pro-style system. Now they're scaling it back a little bit, allowing him to think less and play faster. That's why you're seeing him complete more balls. Play action. Rattler chased. That corner incomplete. Found the hedge. McKinley Jackson is on the field for AM tonight. Happy to have him back from injury. Mount McKinley 6'2, 325. Found his way into the backfield. Just a monstrous third down here for A&M after two huge momentum plays in the favor of South Carolina with the kickoff return the interception boy th this right here would go a long way to quiet this crowd down I don't know man they've been at the state fair all day they got a bunch of corn dogs and elephant ears in them I don't, I'm not sure they're gonna be quiet at all well, sugar high huh <laughs> that's right all hopped up on Mountain Dew <laughs> come on chip Rattler those shoulder shrug, and that is incomplete. Trying to find Austin Stogner, fellow former Sooner. And that will bring on the kicking team and Mitch Jeter. Well, I love the combination, just a flat route and a corner route. Stogner at 6'5", almost pulled that one down. But you saw the shoulder roll there by Rattler. Yep. Into the boundary, you just don't even have time for that. I think if he let that go a little bit sooner, Stogner maybe would have had a chance, just ran out of time there. 23-yard attempt for Jeter. And he punches it through. This is a series dominated early by AM. They jumped out to leads of 41 and 44 to nothing over the last two years, but this is all Gamecocks early. Xavier Leggett got the party started with a 100-yard kickoff return. Then the pick set him up for the easy triple. Gamecocks up 10-0. All right, Dari, thanks. Knuckleball kickoff, and that will get into the end zone again. South Carolina up 10-0. How about AM? and What catches your eye? Well, they got to continue to use more motions and shifts pre-snap. Did this against Alabama really well. What does it do? It changes leverage, and it changes matchups before the snap. They, were, they did have two safeties over the top of that route. After the motion, only one created a one-on-one -on -one matchup, exploited it. Here on a fourth and short, the tight end was pressed. You motion, the cornerback goes out, and they get a tight end with about 15 yards of leverage on a safety. This is one way this offense can be better. We always see it every year for Jimbo against Alabama. All of a sudden, these motions and shifts and formations come out of nowhere, yet they don't build on it. I want to see them build upon this as their identity because it's going to help their offense. Haynes King will take off with it, and 
and he's able to pick up the first down on a gain of 11. So here's what it looks like graphically the percentage of snaps with pre snap motion it gets Alabama 43 percent. You take out the two minute minute offense it's even higher. Yeah 10 straight plays at the end where they're trying to go fast with no motion. You take that out every other play against Alabama had some form of motion and the offense looked better more consistent. The other big game against Miami 36 percent. So in big games it seems like they, they they go to this but they need to use it more. It's a four man rush complete to Evan Stewart uh, pardon me incomplete on the perimeter that leaves second and ten. We mentioned the offensive line. Uh, Akio Goombi is out. George Spadjevich Moko is out. Center Bryce Foster is out. So Trey Zoon freshman at left tackle. Cam Dewberry freshman at left guard. Matthew Wyckoff freshman at center. And Cole that's a huge difference in any environment. I think I'd stay behind the right side as much as I could. Layton Robinson, Ruben Fogley have put good film on over the last couple of years, but you're right. Center left, very new. And look at that. The ball got loose, and it's scooped up by Taka Hemingway. Hemingway, another fumble recovery. He's inside the 20. Boy, this couldn't go any better for South Carolina right now, and you see Matthew Wyckoff in there at center replacing Bryce Foster. Thought he was shotgun snapping it, but Haynes King was trying to change the play. Big miscommunication. You see Haynes King walking forward. Went off and of Wyckoff his knee. snaps it. That's part of that's the environment, though. It's loud, even when this crowd isn't at a 10 out of 10. You got a new excuse me, a new. Red shirt freshman center. And that was a disaster. Opportunity to build on it. Here's Marshawn Lloyd. Also, Jordan, think about the confusion when that noise does start to hit. You make adjustments, right? So, hey, we're going to go by clap, and then we're going to go two claps, or we're going to go verbal. Then maybe it's going to be that the quarterback's going to lift his leg. A lot of confusion can happen when you start to change things in the middle of the game, and then the noise is there on top of that. Steve Adazio, longtime head coach, is the O line coach at Texas AM. Working with Wyckoff and company with the grease board on the sideline. How big a hole is too big a hole for this Texas AM offense? Here's Lloyd. And he takes it down to the 10, just shy of the first down. Andre White Jr. is back from injury. And in on the stop for the Aggies. And Andre White filling in for Edrin Cooper, who's out tonight. Played the whole game against Alabama, but. Not healthy enough to go, so they're glad to have Andre White back. I tell you what, DJ Dirk and the defensive coordinator for AM has been put, put in some really tough spots early on. Another huge third down as they motion Here's Rattler out. Christian Beal Smith with the direct snap. And he fights his way for a South Carolina first down and more. Spit out inside the five. What a run by Beal Smith, the Wake Forest transfer. Boy, oh, and he's their most physical back. They go to the Wildcat here. It's actually a really good job by Chris Russell meeting Bill Smith in the hole, but Bill Smith is all at 5'9, 205 pounds, built like a fire hydrant. He won that battle. If you ever wonder why you win Oklahoma drill in practice, that was it. Right there. That's a great point. Out of the pistol now. First and goal. Bill Smith with the bounce, and he is in. Five yard touchdown run. Soda City is bubbling over early. Fourteen seconds in, South Carolina led this game seven nothing, and they can get tricky on the extra point. Here we are, a little shovel pitch, and it is in, but a flag down on the two-point conversion. That's Tonka Hemingway on the pitch. First time they've run it, but this play was scouted out a couple of weeks ago. I was looking at my replay. You're the special teams guy. What happened? They ran the option with the shovel. Oh, yeah, that's right. You called that like two weeks ago. It was an illegal ship. And so they'll redo it. 
I was talking with her punter Kai Kroger. Take a look at where the movement came on the shift. Huh. I think the the right guard or whatever he yeah. is in that set wasn't quite set. He would put his hand down right as the motion started. So traditional point after it's a 17 nothing South Carolina lead and great design on that touchdown run. Look at all the lateral movement that pulls Damani Richardson and all these second level defenders and a jet sweep's going to come here. Richardson linebacker that way and the run comes right back to replace him. Great misdirection in South Carolina off to a huge lead. And welcome to the start of a new chapter under the lights of the South. It's the debut of SEC primetime football. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC. An 18-game home winning streak comes to an end. The Aggies gigged them. No doubt about it. That was the birth of a network. First ever game right here on the SEC Network with Hall of Famer Brent Musburger on the mic with Jesse and Kaylee. And AM has never looked back. Kenny Hill that night threw for 511 yards. Safe to say we're a long way from that with this situation tonight, Cole. There's no doubt. I mean, the, the energy on the field is just contagious. I, this is the best environment we've been in the entire season. And obviously, the way South Carolina is playing is alluded to that. But we question sort of. Where is this A&M team mentally and emotionally? A lot of conversations happening during that break between Bryce Foster, the former starting center who's out, Haynes King, Steve Adazio, the offensive line coach. Looked like Bryce Foster was going to Haynes King saying he didn't get it, he didn't get it. King going to Wyckoff asking him, did you hear the clap? Did you see the foot? A lot of confusion in just how they're going to handle the exchange right now. So Foster in street clothes turned into assistant O-line coach. King to the slant and that's complete for a first down to Evan Stewart and interesting just watching Haynes King there there was no clap there was no step it sounds like or looks like they're still on a verbal cadence so another third down if it gets loud and they're not using some kind of clap or something like that A&M has been a good cover behind team this season against Arkansas trailed 14 nothing back in late September came back to win that one on a missed field goal. King keeps it. And a little stutter step move. If he is bothered by his foot, it certainly doesn't look like it here. That's a run for eight. But overall, it's been a bothersome AM offense this season. It really has. And it's surprising because if you look at the roster, there's a lot of talent, albeit young. Evan Stewart on the outside, Moose Muhammad, Devon A. Chain. They've had so inconsistency. Then the inconsistency at quarterback. It's really been the issue. Max Johnson and Haynes King completion percentage being able to target the ball or target receivers downfield explosiveness out of the pass game. All of that has just been wildly inconsistent week to week. Two turnovers already tonight for Texas A&M and Carolina with an opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Here's Devon A. Chain. And he takes it for seven yards. Cole, it's very rare that you get a guy labeled a track guy who's actually a football guy, to use a football term. And I'll be I'll be completely honest. I made that mistake going into this season. You watched Isaiah Spiller last year. He looked like a bruiser, a bowling ball that could handle 25, 35 carries a game. My question, if Devon A. Chain could be that guy going into the season, he has turned into an all-around running back. He can get it done between the tackles, as we see outside the tackles. He's catching the football better. He is an all-purpose running back, not just a track guy in a football uniform. Only power five player with a touchdown and a rush, a reception, and a kickoff return. Here's King on the run, and that one's handled, and they're moving the football now. Gain of 11 as he finds Donovan Green. And moving the pocket, right? What is that, the third or fourth time we've seen Haynes King on a rollout? Drop back pass is not going to be on the menu tonight for A&M with the injuries up front. At the offensive line and Haynes King obviously battling some kind of injury possibly a foot it looks like it may be bothering him but either way against a team that blitzes as much as South Carolina does move that pocket as much as possible 
They were incredibly disruptive against Kentucky two weeks ago and play action incomplete and no flag. Evan Stewart got popped after the ball sailed by. David Spaulding doing the hitting for South Carolina. Depp took a hit in the Carolina secondary this week. R.J. Roderick is no longer with the team. He had lost his starting job at safety to Nick, uh, pardon me, Nick Emanwari. Six sacks against Kentucky in their last game. They came in with four on the season in that one. A chain, maybe two. Or a little gap scheme run there. I think when you have a team that's as aggressive as South Carolina is, a and going to be living in these gap schemes. Try to get a big wall, push down all that movement, pull somebody around. Now here on third down, communicate the cadence. It's going to get loud and protect Haynes King. Give him some time. Put a chain all the way up towards the line. He picks up a block. King lets it go as he's hit, and it is too much trying to find Moose Muhammad. Boy, Zach Pickens for South Carolina in the A gap does a really good job of getting skinny here through this double team. Watch him turn his shoulders. Get skinny, not a double team, just a down block by the guard there, but he beats him to the point. Causes the pressure in the air and throw on Haynes King. This will be a long attempt of 51 yards for Randy Bond. And that one will leak over the crossbar and through. And Texas A&M is able to get on the board after an eight-play 41-yard drive. Well, here's the season in a nutshell for Texas A&M. They were a top 10 team coming into the season. Remember back in 20, they, they nearly made the playoff. They won the Orange Bowl. Jimbo got extended through 31. Last year, got a big win behind Nick Calzada over Alabama. February, one of the best recruiting classes in college football history signed with Texas A&M. And after being number six in the preseason and a top 10 team during the season, out of the rankings, sitting at 500 and the meaning of this game that the possibility of falling below 500 could have devastating effects I mean incomprehensible for a lot of A&M fans for what you just mentioned the track record the money they've invested in this program into Jimbo Fisher but when you look at it a lot of teams in this conference and across the country are adapting especially on the offensive side of the ball A&M just hasn't yet Cole, what do you got for us tonight? Well, obviously going to talk about pullers, and we're going to talk about gap scheme runs, and when get a little bit more of that after this first play. <laughs> uh, what, wherever you are, I can tell that you are on the move. So being the offensive <laughs> lineman of the group, we're going to give you a moment to go ahead and cover the ground. He's running somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got dance teams, cheerlead teams, palm squads, alumni, boosters. A lot of people want to be in your shoes. Rattler on play action. Deep out, and that is incomplete. Let's take you guys through the mechanics of a pulling guard. We've got our offensive line, Jordan, Tom, security guy, center guard tackle. Backside guard's gonna be the puller. I'm the defensive end. So, huh? Go down. Guard pulls. I go upfield. I'm the defensive end. If he sees me upfield, he has to change his track to climb and take me out. Now, if I play flat down the line of scrimmage, he knows he better buckle up, get ready for physical contact right off the bat. With DJ Dirk and defensive coordinator for AM, fellas, I'll tell you after the play. Here's Lloyd for a couple. He told me his goal in this game with his defensive ends, specifically on gap scheme, gap scheme runs, is to confuse the South Carolina offensive line. He wants them to think about what they're going to get out there on the edge. So you'll see some screaming upfield. You'll see some crash down flat the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you, any position as a football player, when you begin to think, you slow down. And that's what DJ Durkin wants from the South Carolina offensive line in gap scheme runs. They're going against a very talented, if 
not inexperienced defensive line for Texas A&M. Rattler had plenty of time and he's able to fit it to Stogner. The Oklahoma transfer finds another Oklahoma transfer never went down but Ford progress ruled to have stopped just past the 45 yard line. That's a great job by Stogner obviously the relationship with Spencer Rattler goes all the way back to Oklahoma. So Cole you're talking about that gap scheme you, you could see some of that against Alabama. Absolutely. Texas A&M defensive ends did a really nice job of sort of throwing Alabama off their tracks. Watch your right guard 55 here, Emil Ikior. You're going to get a defensive end screaming upfield. You have to change your track back. It just ends up in a whiff. And then obviously a TFL for the Texas A&M defense. The most important part are your eyes for a puller. You have to see pre-snap where that alignment is and then post-snap where that defender is and potentially where that defender is going. It's not just pulling out there and going and ramming somebody and running over somebody. It's more difficult than a lot of people believe. Personal foul penalty wiped that playoff. A 15 yard penalty against South Carolina. Pressure up the middle. Here's Marshawn Lloyd. And he lost the football. Ruled incomplete. And he's not going to be happy with himself. He told us in our meetings yesterday his goal and the dedication he had to being a better receiver had manifested itself. He said, I think last year I led the team in drops in practice. He said, I don't think I've dropped one all practice all year. And it was simply a matter of focus and not trying to get upfield before the ball was in his hands. Yeah, and he really wants to be a complete back, obviously. He's the bell cow and he's coming along as the featured guy over 100 yards last time out for South Carolina. Here's Stogner again. But he wants to be a weapon out of the backfield as well. And Stogner, we don't talk enough about Stogner. He's really, in a weird way, the MVP or the, meet, the most important piece of this offense. Oh. He's what makes it go. He's the MIP. Most, yeah, there you go, MIP. Yeah. Yeah. He's so versatile. He's able to block on the end of the line of scrimmage. They can split him out. Obviously, you've seen the last couple of plays what a receiving threat he can be. But the South Carolina offense loves to use multiple tight ends, as you see. Nate, Nate Atkins, Atkins yep. checks in the game. They want to be very versatile with their personnel grouping. And they're going to think about this third and short. Play clock was winding down. South Carolina uses a timeout. timeout. Carolina. And we'll take it with them. That is their what first a blitzkrieg of a start half. for South Carolina tonight. Took the first touch back 100 yards. More fun than the fair. Up 17-3. What happens at home, that's your business. Our business is putting you in one. In the market for a home mortgage, we can do that. Coastal Carolina National Bank. Apply online at myccnb.com. Ion. Electrified. Hanguk Tire. All right, South Carolina State Fair has been around since 1869. First opened a couple months before the first college football game was played. I've had the opportunity to sample one of these delicacies. It is a donut cheeseburger. Maybe that thing will walk its way right over to this booth. I would do deplorable things to that. I think a I lot could, of choices. Think I could run over there at halftime and just snag a few? Yeah, sure. Running a suit like that, it's going to rip. A gain of only one when they needed two, and the AM defense with a good stop on Christian Beale Smith. And Aggie's trying to find some momentum. Carolina will punt it away. We're talking about the trick play they ran on uh, the point after. I was talking with Kai Kroger before the Kentucky game a couple of weeks ago and talking about his arm. He had a great fake punt against Georgia, and I said, well, Did you ever run the option? He said, Yeah, a little bit. Why? I said, you know, you guys should put in one of those option plays with a with a pitch up the middle. And he looked at me, his eyes got big, and he almost said, well, how do you know? Sure enough, it had already been in, and Beamer doing us a favor by running it tonight. He didn't know he was talking to TV's Tom Hart that watches more special team <laughs> tape than anybody I've ever met. 
Here's Moose Muhammad. And the ball came loose. He was able to recover. Great 50-yard punt by Kroger. Man, AM full of mistakes tonight. It was punched out by Darius Rush. He already has a pick. One of two takeaways for the Gamecocks. Yeah, this is just a huge drive for AM. Credit DJ Durkin and that defense for getting put in a couple, uh, excuse me, a couple tough spots and staying strong, forcing punts or forcing field goals. But AM on the offensive side, they got to pick up the slack here. Ames King, four of nine for 54 yards. And this is Le'Veon Moss who gets his first touch. And a gain of three. You can see where the talent is in this offensive unit. They're not short on talent. Not at all. It's, it's how to best get them the football, distribute it to the perimeter, make and create explosive plays downfield. And again, a lot of that has to do with not just lining up in front of people. First three or four or five games of the year, they were just lined up in two by two, three by one. And talking to the offensive staff down on the field, they're like, defenses these days wait for you to get lined up and then they call the play. So if we don't move, they're going to line up and call exactly what they want to stop us. And that's kind of how it's gone. No shift, no motion here. A chain. Trying to find some room. He is an incredible runner and he's able to pick up a first down with a gain of eight. Really, imp really impressed with A-Chain. And you're going to see a gap scheme here. Look at these pullers. We talked about the pullers. Layden Robinson getting out on the edge there, adjusting to where Eman Wari was on the end line of scrimmage. But really impressed with A-Chain's durability. And I'm going to echo what Cole said earlier. When you look at him, when you watch film, when you hear about the track speed, you, you don't imagine he's an every down guy, but he can take a beating, he can deliver a beating, and it's really tough for defenses to get clean shots on him. King on play action going deep over the middle. It is incomplete. Man, that was a shot. Trying to find Chris Marshall, the freshman wide receiver. Second attempt. Well, I got a double post concept here on the outside to get another shot. Oh, maybe a little bit early that yeah. time. Yeah, DQ Smith a little early there on Chris Marshall. Is that enough for a flag in your opinion? I think you see that a lot, but yeah, I think when you're running naked down the field by yourself, that's a pretty easy one to see. You do that often? Yeah, sometimes. Crazy Saturday nights. That's second and ten. Tipped. And fell short. Taka Hemingway is a fantastic athlete, and he was deep in the Aggie backfield. Third down, ten. from DQ Smith and Aiden will have to punt it away a little Sam fire nickel comes off the edge here right out of the picture the offensive line is actually doing a three-man slide to the left you saw Haynes King walk up and change the protection just got fooled by the picture he saw before the snap thought pressure was coming from the left came from the right a whistle that one dead before the snap got on. False start on the offense, number 29, five yard penalty. It remains fourth down. That'll back gain him up a little bit. Nick Constantino is their punter. He is fantastic punter, and AM has a long and storied history of great punters. Constantino second in the FBS in average hang time. Four point three five seconds. Josh Van is back to receive.
Plenty of hang time on this one. Van at the sideline carries it out of bounds after a 47 yard punt. 17 to 3. South Carolina will have the ball in just a moment. But first, here's Darinoko. Yeah, Tom, plenty of fireworks in T-Town, all from Alabama. Jameer Gibbs breaks free and gets into the end zone. Alabama up 14-0. Then after Mike Leach elected to go for it for a fourth time on fourth down, stopped for the second time, Bryce Young finds Treshawn Holden. It's 21-zip midway through the second. All Bama. He's gone for it four times on fourth down tonight? I guess 50% clip is pretty good. Here's Juju McDowell's first carry, and he gets blasted in the backfield. AM thought they had the takeaway. Bryce Anderson came up with the football. It's a loss of four. South Carolina has been outgained by 49 yards here in the first quarter. Yet thanks to the takeaways in the special teams play, it's a two touchdown lead. The previous play is under the review. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down. Well, Bryce Anderson is celebrating already. Did he get it out before the runner was down is the question that the replay booth with help from Birmingham is trying to answer. Juju gets spun right there. Oh, that ball is out. That ball is really out. The question is who had possession? Wow. Anderson came down with it. Clear possession. Well, that was really tough to see from any angle other than these tight shots right here because that ball never really goes anywhere except for right into Anderson's chest. Yeah, it started with his face mask. It's one way to jar the ball loose. AM needs something good to go its way. And this would be a major momentum swing. And huge field position, right? AM's been on the bad side of field position battle all night. This would be a huge one. Get the ball inside the 30 yard line. It sure looks like they're going to. South Carolina has had a problem with turnovers. Tied for 122nd in the country entering this week. 15 giveaways. After review, it is a fumble. Video evidence shows that the ball is loose, recovered by the defense. First down for the defense. So here we go. What a change. The AM band finally able to strike a tune. I think you're going to get a really good idea right here at what AM. Wants to do on offense who they want to attack because I think they're going to take a shot. Shane Beamer shaking his head. A chain next to King. King pulls it back, fires wide, but it is complete to Chase Lane. That's a heck of a catch by Chase Lane. It's a little double slant combination to the field. That ball pretty far behind Lane, but makes a great adjustment. King on the season, five touchdowns to five interceptions. Got Evan Stewart man to man coverage at the top of your screen right there. A chain will take it himself, and he carries it for the first down. Previous play, South Carolina doubled Evan Stewart with a safety and a bracket coverage. They know he's a guy they want to give opportunities down the field. So dynamic, such a good athlete, stellar route runner for being a true freshman. It's already been targeted five times tonight, only has two catches. A chain tries to. Hang a U-turn on UG and gets nothing. And that'll bring it into the first quarter. And what a quarter for South Carolina. The opening kickoff taken back 100 yards by Xavier Leggett. And Shane Beamer's team continuing its momentum. 
after his first road win in the conference two weeks ago against Kentucky. Also first win against a ranked team. And they've had Billy Bryce rocking early here tonight in Columbia. Pressure stood tall and delivered on time. It's a pickup of nine. Chase Lane has been busy tonight. That's already his third catch. Boy, really the first drop back pass where protection was pretty solid. Haynes King had a lot of time, really got to his third read on that progression. Six of 14 start for King. They're down two in front of the student section. And now I formation for the first time. Timeout. Texas A&M. This is their first charge timeout of the half. Jimbo quick enough to get the timeout and not happy at all. Jimbo not happy with one of his true freshmen, the tight end Donovan Green. He's saying, on, Donovan, on. You're supposed to be on the line of scrimmage. You're going to see right here, I formation. Tight end's going to be on the line of scrimmage here. He's not. Just another one of those true freshmen out here in a hostile environment. So after the timeout, still third and two. Tripped up is L.J. Johnson Jr. Picked up maybe a yard. That will leave fourth and a long one. Jimbo's keeping the offense on the field. Yeah, you got to go for it here. The way this game has started. The struggles on offense. They're bringing Donovan Green, the true freshman tight end, back on the field. They'll have two tight ends. And a chain. Back. And a chain. Officially fourth and two. Play clock is already at 10. Jimbo's got to call timeout. You know, I wonder if the spot played a role in that. If he thought it was one yard versus two, it doesn't sound like much, but, but how it, does it impact play calling? Well, it's big, right? On, on the back of your play sheet, you have fourth and ones, fourth and twos, got to have it type situations with this is. Two yards is a lot different than a half yard or inside one. So, and that that would be communication that comes from the booth. Yes. Down to him. Said, all right, we need one or yeah. we need two. And if, I mean, I was off by a yard on the spot where I thought that previous play ended. They very easily could have been as well. Well, and just to take you inside the head of that process is that play call is starting before the ball is snapped. So, so the offensive coordinator Daryl Dickey's up there. Whatever offensive staff that's giving Jimbo's information is trying to tell him, ah, it looks like two, it looks like one, maybe it's one. So they're trying to get. He's trying to look at the play call before the ball is officially spotted. Once he realizes it's two, they're trying to get heavier personnel in there, and just now they had a chance to think about it. So they'll kick. Bond has already made one from 51. From 26. Carolina's blocked five kicks on the year. Bond gets it up and over with ease. AM burned two timeouts on that possession to find three points. Let's take a look at our hometown connection. Brought to you by T-Mobile. South Carolina head coach Shane Beamer was asked last season, what's your interest in Virginia Tech? When I said this was my dream job, uh, I wasn't just saying that to make it sound cool in a press conference or, or to get the job. This is where my wife and I and my family want to be. Uh, we didn't put that sign up over there at williams Bryce Stadium that said, welcome home, just because it was trendy and a slogan. This is home. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the head coach at, at South Carolina. I want to be the head coach at South Carolina. He has a varied resume where he has worked for some premier coaches over the years. Of course, Shane played for his dad, Frank Hall of Famer, at Virginia Tech. That's where that interest would have percolated if possible. And I'm talking to him yesterday about what he's learned. He's I've taken something from every head coach that I've worked for over the years.
no return here for South Carolina. I mean, look at this list of names and the accolades that he has pulled from this experience. Georgia Tech was his first job, then Philip Fulmer. He said, Sylvester Croom is still like a father figure to me. He treated those players like a father. There was real love in the Mississippi State program. We asked about the head ball coach, and he said, you know, it's funny. I was on the staff and went back to Florida for the first time. And on Saturday afternoon, I was grinding in my room about my special teams plan, threw open the curtains, looked outside. Steve Spurrier was shirtless by the pool, relaxed, confident. And he said, if the head coach isn't bothered by the stress, why am I? As Christian Beal Smith tripped up. I was talking to him pregame. You know, Jordan, when we walked in, the team walk was going on and they were just entering the locker room and he had this air of pride about him and I mentioned that to him I said what was the first moment you had where you put your shoulders back in your chest I said I'm the head coach here at South Carolina he was honestly it was the spring game and, and we had a good crowd and we came out of the tunnel the 2001 plan and he said I just stood in that tunnel before he ran out and I took a moment and I said this is it this is real this is my job I'm the head coach but I bet today was a little different as that confidence and energy starts to change around this program. Yep. A&M coming to town. Bet it felt a little different walking in today. I think it felt a little different after the Getsch 100 yard kickoff return. Oh yeah. Slightly. A&M turning it up defensively. Yeah, I tell you what, we've, we've been talking a lot about the A&M offense, but South Carolina's offense has got to get things going. I mean, they just have 44 total yards right now. They've had field position, so haven't been forced to drive the length of the field yet, but they also haven't been able to get anything going. Rattler just two of six to start this game. And A&M on this third down second, everybody at the line of scrimmage, they're going to make Rattler sort through who's coming and who's not. They bring only four. Rattler lets it go. And caught. What a grab by Josh Van. He was blanketed by Deuce Harmon, but still found it for a gain of 20. Oh, Rattler lets this ball go really early to a lot of trust there. That could have been a flag as well on the outside. A lot of contact, and Van does a great job of staying focused. Oh, Josh Van, who... Had the 10th most yards in the SEC last year. Entered this year as the second leading returning wide receiver in the SEC, and he's kind of been lost in the mix. Yeah. It's only his fourth catch of the year. Yeah, with Antoine Wells, Jalen Brooks, Amarion Brown all taking bigger roles. Rattler has plenty of time, and he unloads a bump and an incompletion, no flag. Brooks, the intended receiver, there it is. Tyreek Chapel back in action for Texas A&M after missing some time. I thought we had a Rubbins racing moment there for a second, but the hanky came out. There is no cover pass interference. Second down. How about that? You don't see a PA flag, a PI flag picked up very often. Should it have been? Well, I think if you throw it, you call it on this one because the, the arm is on the shoulder there well before, and it is affecting Brooks' ability to maybe jump back for that ball if he wanted to. I'm really surprised they picked that one up. Flag came from the far side of the field as opposed to the nearest official. Now second and ten. Fake to Marion Brown. Rattler finds Marshawn Lloyd. He had the drop on the previous possession. Gain of three, third and seven. Cole, what do you like about what AM's done defensively tonight? Well, the first thing is changing up the fronts. You just saw a bare front, which is the center and two guards are covered up by defensive linemen a moment ago. We've seen even fronts, which are four down. Odd, center, and then two wide ends. So DJ Durkin not going to let this veteran-laced South Carolina offensive line get comfortable. Bit of a change for him in his coaching history as well. He'll step out of his comfort zone and run some different fronts. Former head coach at Maryland. Years in the SEC back to being on Urban Meyer's staff of Florida. On third and six. Man came free. Rattler avoids it. 
And he gets rid of it incomplete. And there is no flag there. Try to find Antoine Wells. I don't know how Spencer Rattler avoided the pressure. Boy, watch the entire O line go this way. Nobody there off the edge. We saw just a few plays ago on a third down. AM stacked the line of scrimmage, and they're going to force the quarterback to be right. Is it coming from the left? Is it coming from the right? There's a lot of balance. There's no real way to tell, and that time just guessed wrong. Here's Kai Kroger. He was thrown for a fake punt this season that came against Georgia. Pretty good part of the field to do it, but AM's offense has looked more competent the last couple of possessions. And this one inside the five. Here's Muhammad, and he is swallowed up. 49 yard punt. Darius Rush all over the place for South Carolina tonight. Kroger's pinned him deep with South Carolina up 11. Rain-X premium silicone wiper blades last two times longer than traditional wipers. If Rain-X premium silicone wipers survive these conditions, clearly they'll last in yours. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. What happens at home? That's your business. Our business is putting you in one. In the market for a home mortgage? We can do that. Coastal Carolina National Bank. Apply online at myccnb.com. Well, so far tonight, Haynes King 6 of 14 for 69 yards, and he will be backed up with field position. It's been a frustrating night for Jimbo Fisher. That's been a frustrating season. Obviously, they're dealing with a lot of injuries, new faces on the offensive line. Quarterback has been back and forth. Obviously, Haynes King started the year, then Max Johnson got injured. Now back to Haynes King. A lot of youth on this team, but they got to figure out who they want to be or really what they want this offense to be, not just now, but for the foreseeable future. It's not an easy position for Haynes King to be in. The ball at the six yard line. What do you like as a quarterback here? I like screens. I like a run. We'll flip a chain. And how about movement? That was going to be a run to the left. Trey Zoon. False start on the offense. Number 50. Half the distance to the goal. Uh, said 50 meant 60. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really surprised that AM is still going with a verbal cadence. I just saw Wyckoff Jordan sort of point to the ear of his helmet and look over to the sideline, basically saying, We can't hear it. I know. Uh, first again. 13, A chain gets it out and picks up a yard. You know, part of that might be that when you're on a clap or a, a knee, a, a leg indicator, the center's got to look between his legs. Yep. And when you have a new center in there, he's losing vision on what the front is, if it's changing where the linebackers are. So maybe you want to do verbal because you want your center with less experience to be able to see everything that's going on, not lose sight of it. But then that's where you go to, okay, then the guard looks back. Get that guard tap. It yeah. happened earlier. South Carolina walked their linebackers up when he looked through his legs. He looked back up, and the front was totally different. Yeah. Mykoff started the first couple of games of the season at center, then played guard last week against Alabama. King caught. That'll give him space. That's Evan Stewart. Pick up of 17. Uh, it's such a good throw by Haynes King. He had time in the pocket. This little high low on the outside. A corner out on the inside by Evan Stewart and a well thrown ball and the clean pocket. Which I haven't seen a ton of those. Yeah. Slide protection again. So King has given himself some breathing room, hooking up with the decorated freshman Evan Stewart. Here's A chain, and he has got a beautiful cutback, great vision. And going back to quarterback play. Jimbo made his name in college football even after being an offensive coordinator. So he got to Florida State. He was developing first round picks at the position the last few years, especially since Jameis 
hadn't even had a first team all conference selection. Yeah, and, and really the last time this offense was really good was 2020 with Kellen Mond, who was a fourth year starter in the system. So the system is more complex. It's pro style. It asks a lot of the quarterback. H.A. needs one and maybe got it. Yellow and, line unofficial, your reminder. It is good for a first down. And in this day and age where offenses are progressing to more tempo, more formation variation, simplification so guys can play faster, this offense really hasn't changed. So what do you do? You take a guy that played the position for Jimbo Fisher, Jordan, and Damian Craig, who had been coaching the wide receivers. He understands how hard Jimbo can be on quarterbacks. I can tell you, I understand that. I was Damian Center for a little while in college. He can calm those guys down, help them understand exactly where Jimbo's trying to go. King, against pressure, is able to find his tight end, and a spin move by Donovan Green. You know, I think that's a really important point if you're a coach that coaches hard, and that's what Jimbo does, there's a lot of toughness in his coaching style. It helps to have someone put an arm around a player and say, hey, this is what he means by that. And, and this is the end goal, even if he doesn't, the head coach doesn't deliver that himself. You have to. I played under James Franklin my first year, who was a very hard coach and very animated on the sideline. And sometimes I go, man, I got to go talk to Ricky Ronnie, my offensive coordinator, because that we can communicate better. Here's a chain and he finds a huge hole. A first down and plenty more for Texas a and The running game going. Rush brought him down after a gain of 29, and there's a flag. A chain one man away from busting that one. There is no foul for a horse collar tackle. First down. Boy, watch this pull here on the back side. We talked earlier about the mechanics of this pulling guard. Is the end upfield? Is he not? Great job of logging that defensive end. He didn't come upfield. He worked down the line of scrimmage. So instead of a kickout block, you turn him back to the inside and open it up on the outside for A-Chain. King bottled up. No gain. That one had to make Cole happy. It makes me happier that you're noticing it and you're talking about it and you appreciate it and you know exactly what it is. I just, it's like seeing one of my kids actually, you know, follow directions and understand how to get something accomplished. I just don't, I don't think it people realize work. that these are 300 plus pound guys that are having to make a split decision in a half a second, not even a half, a quarter of a second, yeah. where their defensive end screams upfield or he works down the line of scrimmage and it completely changes the mechanics and the physicality of what they have to do. So great job there on a gap scheme by that puller. We're exactly what we showed story. you earlier. Taking you to the toy store later tonight. And we got movement on the right side. He was taken to the state fair. Yeah. False start. On the offense, Five corn dog. 76. Five yard penalty. Apparently he remains second down. As a thing for corn dogs. As the fourth false start tonight for Texas A&M. Right before that snap, Ruben Fathery looked at Haynes King and confirmed the snap count. But Fathery knew enough to ask, just couldn't put it into practice. You tilt the world guy? No. I'm not a big fair ride kind of guy. I'm not too confident in how they were put together. Second and 15. King looking for a screen and A chain. Found it! What a catch by Devon A chain. And he's able to take it for a dozen yards and set up third and short. Boy, and Haynes King had to hang in there. He's got pressure on him, waiting for A chain as he works outside and back to the inside to find the lane, and it's a great catch. What a job keeping his balance, yeah. huh? Boy, that's the athlete, right? He is not a track guy. He's not just a straight line guy. He's so agile, got great balance. Even though he is an elite track yes. athlete. Third down three. A chain between the tackles, and he's able to pick up the first down. Cole, what did you think of Bunn's reaction when you told him yesterday, you know, I used to think of you as a track guy that was playing football? I feel like I ruined the interview right off the bat there. <laughs>
Yeah. So he, wasn't, he wasn't too happy with us after that, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give him a compliment as to that was our perception of you coming into the season. Everybody talked about, you know, what the hundred time was and how fast and explosive he was, but that body control with the change of direction, being able to stay on his feet, so impressive. NCAA All American, the hundred and two hundred meter. And even more than that, Cole, we noticed watching so much film, the cutbacks, his vision, it's right, to, to press. And, and now it's a little different. They're doing more gap scheme tonight. But when they are running zone, he's pressing the front side, the vision to one, put his foot in the ground, cut all the way back, use his speed to his advantage. Well, it's like Jimbo told us, too, you never see guys get big hits on him. So you can be a little bit of an undersized player. A Wark Dunn is who Jimbo kind of compared him to. If you know how to avoid big contact, you're going to be able to last longer. Pretty good company for a chain in his career. King delivers and we got a flag on the play. Got a five Moose Muhammad. King has taken some shots tonight. Already got a bloody elbow and the jersey getting Holding dirty. On the defense number three. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Carries it as an automatic first That's Devani Reed. And Devani's going to catch Max Wright changing directions here. The run fake and the boot away. Oftentimes that'll get those backside defenders. But for South Carolina, good to have Devani Reed back in the lineup. He wasn't in the lineup against Kentucky. He's really the leader on the back end there. 47th career start tonight for Reed. 11th play of this drive. A chain dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That's Tonka Hemingway. And there is a connection to that first name. Picked it up his dad said you're tough like a Tonka truck. And he's spending some time in A&M sandbox tonight. Yeah look at this. The vertical penetration. And him trying to get a wall of defenders there pushed in one direction, but Tonka came right through it. First tackle for loss tonight for South Carolina. Second and goal. Out of the backfield, A chain gathers, but covered well by Sherrod Green. Senior out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, at 12 tackles and a sack against Kentucky. In the Gamecocks last game. Well, we saw Max Wright, the tight end, go in motion there. It's moments like these down in the red zone on third downs that I'd love to see Evan Stewart go in motion. Get your best player moving from one side of the field to the other to really force the defense to decide what to do. As Evan Stewart's going to be on the bottom of your screen, alone as the X receiver, so he won't be going in motion. Put a chain right behind the line to help block. King stumbles, picks up his feet, and delivers, and is in across the line for Max Wright. What a play by the tight end out of Katy, Texas. And they will look and see if Wright extended the ball over the plane of the goal line. Boy, in a banged up Max, excuse me, Haynes King. Got the foot problem, pressure on the outside, the ability to stay up and get his eyes downfield again with pressure from the front and the back. Oh, yeah. And it, yeah, definitely looks like Max Wright got that ball in. Great body control and awareness to know exactly where he was to get that touchdown. AM has not attempted a two point conversion yet this year, but they'll leave the offense on the field to try and make it a three point game. Jimbo was talking with the line judge. Oh, choosing where they wanted the ball placed. They'll keep it in the middle of the field. King to the end zone, and there's a two point conversion for Evan Stewart. Dropped his dreidel after the touchdown. I'm going to see the route running ability from the talented true freshman, Evan Stewart. 
But it was the touchdown and really the pocket awareness by Haynes King to keep that one alive and finish it off with a two-point conversion. A three-point game. Welcome into the studio. We'll see you in a few minutes. Region's halftime report. Show you how LSU gives Ole Miss its first loss. Bryce being Bryce. Tennessee scoring big. What are you seeing in Columbia here? Fast start. You couldn't have scripted it any better. Kickoff return for a touchdown. from the recovery. A near pick six. But after that, 85 yards of total offense for South Carolina. Not going to be enough out of it. Not at all. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, gang. Thanks a lot for you guys to talk about at the break. Two minutes before half. No return for South Carolina. What's your take on what Spencer Rattler has looked like so far tonight? Well, they really haven't been able to get him in rhythm, right? No short passes. Run game hit a couple times. Missed a few downfield. So two minute here. Sometimes this is when the quarterbacks get back in rhythm the most. You're simplifying your game plan. You're getting to those day one, week one install plays that everybody knows like the back of your hand. And sometimes you push the pace a little bit with tempo. Just got to get him comfortable. Only four of ten so far tonight. You know, Marshawn Lloyd went for 110 on 22 carries against Kentucky. He hasn't been that much of an impact tonight. Here's Jaheim Bell who gets taken down after a gain of four. Cole, they love to get versatile with Bell. Oh, there's no doubt. And I was told before the game that they're probably going to line him up in line as a regular tight end. Said that off week helped him with some of the technique and fundamentals of blocking. And now they move him off. On second and six, go all right back to him, and he muffed it. Junior from Lake City, Florida, is for a guy who's 6'3, 232, he's about as versatile as you can get. Yeah, just on a little flat route here. Took his eyes off it. I mean, he, he's really the most talented player on the South Carolina roster for a combination of size, speed, athleticism, but the consistency in the blocking schemes, in line. He's kind of got lost in the mix. Snap count's gone down as the weeks have progressed. They get a little predictable when he's on the field because yeah. he can't play the entire game. Exactly. So he's not in on some of those blocking plays. So when he's in, defenses know, okay, they're going to try to get him the ball. That's why they want him to develop that blocking aspect, be more of a complete player. And now third and six. Rattler lets it fly. It hands and hauled in by Juice Wells. It's a pickup of 25. His seven sisters must love that catch. Yeah, and a great adjustment by Spencer Rattler before the play. I think he signaled out there to change the route. And that's Juice Wells on the outside making a great play. He's been such an impactful player, and even more an impactful personality for this roster. Rattler has all day and will throw that one into the net. What is it? How does it change things to have a guy like Juice Wells with the wide receiver core? Well, in talking to Shane Beamer, I feel like he said he really set the bar high for this receiver group from a competition standpoint. Came in and elevated that group, challenged that group, brought an edge and a chip on his shoulder that that group really needed. So it's been a, a blessing to have him as just a player, but also what he's meant from a leadership standpoint in that group as well. Four man rush again. Line doesn't hold this time. Rattler on corks it to the end zone. Incomplete off the hands of Jalen Brooks. These are the throws as Brooks is down there on the field. You were going to say the throws that made Rattler the number one quarterback in the class of 19? Yes. I mean, the sheer arm talent on the run through that one, almost 60. Athletic training staff looking after Jalen Brooks. He went down hard. Back to Columbia in a moment. Previous play, Jalen Brooks seemed to bang his head on the ground. When he went down and lie motionless for a moment or two and helped by the athletic training staff into the tent. And it leaves third and ten for Spencer Rattler.
Good pickup, but Rattler's still running for his life. And he'll flick that one over to the dance team. So minute one remaining. Remember, AM had to burn two timeouts on one possession due to play clock and personnel issues. And even though they've been able to move the ball lately by making this a three point game, this is going to be a long field with only one timeout. Moose Muhammad back to receive. Kroger trying to pin him in the five again, and that one just missed, and will carry in for a touchback. 45 yard punt. Let's take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. It might be the coolest little piece of tailgating in all of college football. Have you ever been over to the Cockaboos? No, I want to, though. It's over by our TV truck every time. Why don't we stop in there? We could. Post game, we're coming for you. Well, they got a spread, huh? You guys got a turnover chain? What are those little uh, hot dog little things with the what yeah, those called? mini corn dog? Yeah, yeah, pigs in a blanket. Yeah. There we go. God, those are good. I'm hungry. Corn dogs, pigs in a blanket. What's your relationship with corn dogs like? Um, I mean, I love them. What do you mean? Yeah, fair enough. I love everything there is to love about fried food. Don't threaten me with a good time. A chain will run it on first down. And finds four. He meant worry he was able to bring him down. I think AM is going to be content to let this one roll out. Yeah. I mean, the way this game started, right, with the kickoff return for the touchdown, the interception, I mean, they did an exceptional job to claw out of that hole and make this a three point game at half. Big credit to DJ Durkin and this defense. Got put in a bunch of tough spots, and the offense started making some plays as well. Well, the last time AM won a game after trailing by 17 or more was back in the Chick fil A Bowl in 2013 against Duke. Johnny Manziel in that game threw for 382, four touchdowns, ran for another in his final game as an Aggie. It would take that kind of comeback, and AM looks like it might be on its way to doing it. To leave South Carolina win and go to 9 and 0 against the Gamecocks. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance from the mighty sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Here's Cole with Shane Beamer. Coach, the intensity in this place was legitimately off the charts there after the first couple of the series, but how do you make sure that intensity maintains with your team? Yeah, we got to sustain drives offensively. I mean, unbelievable start with the kickoff return and the touchdown uh, and the uh, turnover. And then offensively, we just got to sustain drives. I mean, we've, our defense has been on the field way too long. Uh, we're not able to run the ball like we need to right now, and that's the biggest thing. But having said that, I mean, we knew it was going to be a four-quarter game. This is SEC football and two physical, physical football teams. What do you think you need to alter in order to get that run game going the second half? You know, some of it's perimeter blocking. You know, they're doing a great job. They're making one-on-one -on -one tackles, too. I mean, we had a couple runs inside zones that almost popped out of there, and the safety came down there and made a tackle one-on-one. -on -one. So we got to be uh, continue to find ways and continue to wear, try and wear them down in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Well, it was a 17-0 lead has been whittled down to 17 14 at the break uh, we will be at the fair while Dari and the guys do all the heavy lifting corn dogs coming Dari. Ooh, corn dog here please as we welcome you to the region's halftime report choose will get fixed that way Carolina's taking advantage of a short field because yardage wise they haven't done a ton offensively no. tonight no and they got to get back to running the football and they got to they got to find some easier throws for Spencer Rattler we've seen some shot plays quite a few downfield but nothing to get the rhythm of this offense up and going that's what I expect to see when South Carolina gets the ball back what if I told you I found you a corn dog I'm going to say I love you. But I will not say that until I see a corn dog, and I don't see one yet. But I'd be pretty happy. 
I'm here for your pleasure. AM is out game South Carolina 214 to 98. Aggies have rushed for about 100 yards. Fair catch taken. Moments ago, Cole Kublik with Jimbo Fisher. Coach, a lot of pocket movement that you had success with in the first half. How can you capitalize on that, build on that, and find other things to be successful well, in the second half? Keep running the football, too. If you keep running, they got to respect that. Then you get pocket movement, we're getting the plays out. And then the third down, we're making play. Hayne just settled down, played really well. We just got to keep our poise and go execute. But we got to win the line of scrimmage and run it. Find some shots in there, but just keep executing. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. On a chain, averaging nearly six yards a carry. King goes to the slant, and that is caught for a first down by Evan Stewart. Pickup of 17. It's a really good throw by Haynes King. Had that same throw earlier in the game to Chase Lane. Chase ended up catching it, but it was way behind him that time. Right on target. King had 25 completions against Alabama. It would have been a huge momentum win for AM. Here's Muhammad. Remember his dad in the NFL for a long time. 14 years, mainly with the Panthers, also with the Bears, two time Pro Bowler. There it is. Uh, he was destined. Huh? Dad wore 87, he rocks a seven. Second down three. A man matchup on the perimeter incomplete and no flag Marcellus dial all over Evan Stewart one of a handful of five star recruits in this A&M class. And I've circled it a few times when there's man to man coverage on Evan Stewart this time they take the shot but dial just right in phase and that was kind of a tweener ball. Not enough to be a back shoulder, not enough to be over the top to allow Evan Stewart to make a play on it, and just great coverage. He, the dial, got his head turned around before going back to blanket Stewart. Four catches for 73 yards in a third and three. King hooks up with his tight end, Max Wright, and he's got it into Carolina territory at a pickup of a dozen. Oh, it's just a stick route by Max Wright. And Haynes fires this ball. Watch the conviction he throws this with. Bam! Right in there. A couple really strong and accurate throws to start this second half by Haynes King. King has shared time with Mac Johnson this season due to some injuries. Max out with an injury right now. Haynes knows all about that. Season in ending broken ankle against Colorado early last year. And Muhammad won't find that one. This Muhammad looks a little shaken up. Haynes feeling the pain himself. That's what's tough sometimes when you change the launch point, right? Not a drop back pass, so you move that pocket three or four yards to the right. It creates a short edge. That's why that pressure gets to Haynes, and he has taken a beating tonight. Came into this one, little hobbled already with a foot injury. Talking with AM Director of Athletics, Ross Bjork, before the game. And he was raving about King's toughness, and we've seen it in action tonight. Just a hair low, and maybe a little bit behind Chase Lane. Third and ten. Zero sacks for South Carolina tonight. AM has thrown it on every play this drive. All six of them. Late sub for AM.
Pressure coming. King got rid of it. Fell incomplete. Zach Pickens looked around that young left side of the line. Boy, and Edmonds on this side working on left tackle Trey Zoon as well, providing some pressure. Boy, these third downs, these third and long situations, South Carolina, whether they brought pressure or just a four man rush, they've been winning those matchups against a banged up AM offensive line. So they'll punt it away. Casatino puts it inside the 10. It's a 32 yard punt. So Spencer Rattler, kind of slow going tonight. Carolina's taking advantage of their special teams play, and the defense setting them up. He's just six for 16. But he's been undone by some bad hands. Yeah, hasn't had a ton of help out around him. A couple opportunities. That one, uh, tough one. You don't expect him to always come down with that, but Marshawn Lloyd on the outside had a drop. Downfield, this one. Jalen Brooks, the one he got injured on. That could have been a touchdown. Sports Center top 10 touchdown. Shaheen Bell had a drop on what looked like a first down catch. There's Lloyd. First man missed. Uh, pardon me, that's Antoine Wells Jr. Juice picks up five. And, and that's been a little bit of a storyline for South Carolina. If you look back over at, it was two games ago, that Spencer had two interceptions, both of them off the hands of his receivers. And if you were grading it, they weren't bad throws or decisions by the quarterback, just off the hands of a receiver into the defender's hands. So, been a little bit of an issue. And second and five. There's Lloyd again and prepped it. DeMatha in D.C. He's a Delaware native and had a two hour one way drive to get from Delaware to DeMatha. And he said, I wouldn't trade it for anything, but originally had zero interest in going to DeMatha. Had incredible academic help. He said, I still talk to the people who made things easy for me at DeMatha and originally committed to Maryland, where DJ Durkin recruited him before signing with South Carolina. It's a joy to talk with. Rattler finds him out of the backfield, and Lloyd turns it up for a first down. And he takes it past the 35. That is a 21 yard reception, and Lloyd did all the heavy lifting. Yeah, and we talked about Jaheim Bell earlier becoming an every down guy. This time he's the one that goes in motion there, using him as a decoy, right? He checks in the game. That puts the antennas up for the defenders. Are oh, they going to get it to number zero? Instead, steal your eyes and throw the opposite direction. That's a Rattler with the change. And coverage, Rattler pressured, and he had to fight to get back towards the line. It goes down as a sack, turned in by Andre White Jr. And you can tell right now that Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, is trying to give Rattler some layup throws. That one right there, there was pressure, but that's a play where you have three receivers on one side, they all run vertical. And the receiver to the right just runs an under route, a drive route from one side to the other. It's it's kind of a, a run play to an extent. You only have one read. You throw it to this guy, get guys blocking in front of him. So you can tell, trying to get Spencer Rattler in rhythm here in the second half. Pressure up the middle. They pick it up. And that is batted and incomplete. It's Andre White that time. He was bringing pressure last time, and that time all over the tight end stalker. Dogner's really been the, the safety blanket. A little, little bit of contact maybe. there, too. That's got, maybe it's like a strike zone. We've seen a few of those tonight. You know, the strike zone, it's just he's calling them a little low. You know, he's, they're letting some hand fighting. A little bit of physical contact. They're letting that go on the outside tonight. Eight completions for 105 yards for Rattler. Four interceptions and touchdowns this season. Nice spin move. Here's Jaheim Bell. And he's got a first down before he's wrestled out of bounds. A pickup of 16. This is that play I was just describing where they're going to block in front of the receiver. He's coming from one side to the other. Everybody on the left side is just blocking. You see, Marshawn Lloyd yep. comes in the picture. Josh Van out there blocking. 
It's a one-man route to try to get your playmaker the ball in space with guys blocking in front of him, and you see the athleticism and the reason they love Jaheim Bell. Looking for a screen, and stepping through it is Wells, and he picks up six. All right, and that's some rhythm now. Yeah, just notice the energy change, right? A couple easier completions for Spencer Rattler. You're not behind the chains now, a second and four or five. This is where they want to live. Straight ahead. Christian Beale Smith picks up three. That'll bring up third and one. We're gonna go a little bit of tempo here. Nearly two yards to gain for the first down, and Texas A&M with a huge stop. That's Chris Russell Jr. They have dealt with injuries all season. He has started every game. Yeah, and it was Chris Russell cleaned that up. But we reset the game clock to 8:57, 8:57. But the reason he was there to make that play is because the defensive Thank line you. for A&M just absolutely stonewalled the South Carolina offensive line. And we don't talk about those guys up front a ton because sometimes they don't show up in the stat columns, but they are. They're taking over the game up front, and that's the reason South Carolina's had such a tough time getting things going between the tackles. That is a beautiful punt if you're a South Carolina fan. Down at the three-yard line. Guy Kroger thinks about punts inside the five the same way Jordan Rogers thinks about corn dogs. They dream about them at night, and soon maybe we have a chance to deliver on that earlier promise. All right, this is where it gets weird. We, we found the fair food. We've had them run over from the state fair. Um, I'm about to make a day. I feel like you should knight me with this thing. Wow. Really? That is good. Wow. Oh, so we're just eating here. All right, here, Hunts. Oh my God. What do you God. got, Cole? You get the donut burger? Oh, I can't even talk. This is the best way. AM is backed up. <laughs> wow. Cole went after and it. And on first and 10, A chain with the carry to pick up a couple. Give, give that a break. How about this? Yeah, you got a. That's like full medieval here. Cole is housing that thing. That Cole's got a glazed donut with a burger in it. What? Wow. I was, here, get you some. There you go. Come on now. That's just about as messy as we get. What if I have to use the telly? Use the corn dog. On second and nine, King nearly picked. And it goes incomplete. Great break on the ball and opportunity for South Carolina. Already has two takeaways tonight. That's Cam Smith, their best defensive back. You'll see him in the NFL. Cole, you need a wet wipe. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding on the defense number nine. The 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot and carries an automatic first down. Well, maybe that's why you're able to make such a great play. I should probably pick up. The uh, onions and things that fell. Wait, how was the donut burger? It's actually incredible. God, it looks good. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it's going to be that good, but <laughs> you're, hey, the good thing you is look like a toddler. You didn't get any on your face or anything. Well done. Could I feel, you, like, I feel like I have some, but could you wipe your mouth, please? Uh, don't. You don't even need. Oh, a you're good. Yet. You're good. Yeah, do, you, do you, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Do we have another one? Uh, yeah, it's in my hands. Oh, run it down. First broadcast crew wearing bibs. A chain picks up four. So what it is is a glazed donut with a burger inside it. Yeah. It's really taking you a while to get to the I'm, bottom. It's a foot long. I'm, I'm halfway through. Oh don't oh don't don't do that. No no don't do that. I'm gonna attack it from the other side here because if you did you just uh uh the sweetness with the salt. Oh, that's great. The onion. Wow. I saw some corn dog in there. Yeah. So it's a, that's a great mix. What a combo. I love bears. Right. 
Ferris wheel all night. King comes back to hook up with a chain. And that will leave third and maybe two. South Carolina State Fair launched in 1869, within four days of the first ever football game. How about that? 1869, they didn't start playing football here in South Carolina until 1892. And based on what the traffic looks like out there, there's still some people from the 1800s sitting on assembly. Third and two. King to the outside and incomplete. Great job at David Spaulding. He returned to action again in the Kentucky game. Well, they've hit this route a few times tonight. Just a corner route. Really, really good coverage by Spaulding. You see, he breaks on the ball. If that isn't thrown with this, that velocity and accuracy, that could be an interception. Only place that ball could have been in a really tough catch. South Carolina, one of the best in the country, and blocking kicks. See if they come after this one. By the way, does your wife Joelle know about your relationship with corn dogs? Oh yeah. Thanks. We have an open relationship when it comes to fried foods. I'm allowed to explore. People magazine is writing all. All right, we got a, we got a president. Chris Capo is presenting you with an elephant ear. What are you trying to? What is this? It's. Fried and it's got sugar on it, and it never had a chance. What was wrong with you? I love the fair. Every October, for two glorious, deep fried, powdered sugar covered blue ribbon weeks, seemingly every available acre around Williams Bryce Stadium hosts the South Carolina State Fair. There's only one thing that can make all of that even better. College football. And maybe some cholesterol medication. Yeah, give me some medication. Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night presented by T-Mobile. I got good news and bad news. The fair doesn't close until midnight, but admission ended an hour ago. So if, if we're going, we're going to have to sneak in. I'm going to need... Some Tums or a heartburn tablet first. Yeah, it's kicking in. I'm, I'm happy. Chase it with an ice cream. But we have um, deep fried butter. Last time we were here, it tastes just like ice cream. Really? Yeah. How do you even? I don't, don't that know. Just doesn't don't make care. sense to me. Here's Lloyd. When you put it in there, doesn't it just kind of like like melt? Or no? The I logistics know. of that are just. Brain got a flash right, right now. You gotta go really fast. Yeah, I feel yeah. that. Just a cube of butter, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, then now it's a party. Your car on it later. South Carolina with a three-point lead, jumped out to a 17-nothing advantage. Rattler going down the sideline. Whoa! What a grab by Stonger. That dude is 6'5", 250, watching him high point balls pregame. He can get up, and he shows it off here. And this throw is stupid. They're selling that little slip screen we've seen so many times where the guys on the outside block. Little pump by Rattler, and that back shoulder was a laser. Stupid meaning good. Yes. Huh, kid? Like just un yeah. unfair that a guy can have that talented of an arm. We don't, we don't want Mr. or Mrs. Rattler uh, sending you a text. Yeah. Here's Lloyd with a nice jump cut, and he takes it to the 25-yard line. Now second and five coming. I just don't think you understand the difficulty of throwing a back shoulder with that velocity. Your margin for error is razor thin. Yeah. I mean, that ball has to be perfect when you throw it with that velocity, and it was on that one. It was interesting talking with Spencer about going from the air raid at Oklahoma and some of the spread stuff that he ran in high school to now this pro style system under Marcus Satterfield and he said listen the concepts can still be the same it just takes a little bit longer to get us there and now to second and five here's Lloyd again and he stretched for the fourth yard and that'll leave third and short 
Tom, going back to Rattler and trying to find that, that medium ground of understanding this offense versus his previous offense. You know, Freddie Kitchen, former head coach of the Cleveland Browns, former Alabama quarterback, is now on staff here at South Carolina. I talked to him before the game, and he said, listen, I have a little bit of an advantage because I coached Baker his, his rookie year in the NFL. So I've been able to talk to Spencer about this offense versus that offense. I understand the differences and the difficulties of trying to get on track. a and with a lot of movement up front. Lloyd is the tailback. They give it to the first man through. That is Lloyd. Pardon me. And he picks up the first down. He was there with Christian Beal Smith. Haven't seen a lot of two back from South Carolina with both Lloyd and the guy who goes by CBS on the field at the same time. Two back in. They brought an extra offensive lineman in on that one. Wyatt Campbell, normally number 68, had an 80 jersey on, lined up at tight end. They ran right behind him. I like the fact that he tucks the jersey up like he is really a tight end, too. Yeah. Lloyd shakes one inside the 10 and into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina and Marshawn Lloyd. Blocking is contagious. Brooks and Brown, the wide receivers, doing their part, and Lloyd has yet to come off the field. A hug will help. And the point after punch through by Cheater. Ten point Carolina lead. I think Shane Beamer mentioned it at halftime. He better block it on the perimeter. Great cut by Marshawn Lloyd and Amarion Brown. Jalen Brooks on the outside. Clear in the way. Seventh touchdown of the season for Lloyd and South Carolina extends its lead. Well, Marshawn Lloyd making his name second among SEC running backs with his eighth rushing touchdown of the season back to back weeks. He had a great game against Kentucky last week. Or pardon me, that was two weeks ago. Carolina idled this past weekend. Come on, A chain brings it out and takes it. Just past the 20. Got a moment. Let's get it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Wherever fun happens, Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Twenty-four fourteen. I to say, if Haynes King is bothered by an injury, he, he hasn't looked like it very often tonight. Here's a chain, and he has nothing to do. Now there was a couple times where maybe he could have planted a little bit better, but as often as they've used him for a runner, doesn't seem like it's uh, having any impact on the play call. No, and honestly, it really the first couple plays was the time I noticed a little bit of a hobble and. What that tells me is once that adrenaline kicks in, I don't think it's really much of an issue. You're right. Maybe on one of the QB keepers, didn't look like he had the same speed or burst that he maybe used to have, but he's moving, navigating the pocket really well, and he's doing a great job under a lot of pressure tonight from that South Carolina front. Played for his dad, John, at Longview High School in Texas, and that one tipped at the line of scrimmage. And Zach Pickens again, preseason second team, all SEC. And it's 6 4 3 0 5. The senior from TL Hanna got deep. That's about the second, maybe third batted ball tonight. If South Carolina's not getting pressure on Haynes King, they're doing a good job of getting in the passing lanes. And third and long here. South Carolina has pressured in this situation almost all night. And it looks like 
They're bringing pressure here as this safety rolls down. A bad snap again, but a flag and another false start coming. That is the fifth false start against AM. And that has been debilitating. False start on the offense, number 77. Cole, you played the position. What's it like being a center in the SEC on the road? Definitely not fun when it's this loud and I'm down here in this student section end zone and I can tell you you can't hear much. You're trying to communicate. You're trying to have an understanding of when the quarterback wants the football, whether that's verbally or a leg that's going up. You're trying to designate the defense. Mike Linebacker, there's a lot happening with this kind of distraction on top of it. Third down in Orangeburg to go. At some point, they're going to have to go to a, a silent cadence. You said that in the first half. I know. I mean, just listen to it. Late four-man rush out to A-Chain, and he is stopped short on the nice open field tackle, a pickup of 11. Debo Williams brought him down. By right, that time, South Carolina did bring the pressure off the edge. The play on the fall start, they bluffed it. Looked like they are going to bring the pressure, backed off it, but this time, Cam Smith blitzes from that nickelback position. And force the early Aaron throw. Constantino to punt it away. Josh Van will have a chance. And he is wrangled at the 30 after a 46 yard punt. Beamer ball 2.0 got up to a great start. Opening kickoff returned 100 yards by Xavier Leggett. Did his best, Debo Samuel. And then Christian Beal Smith was able to run one in. They were working with a short field after a pick and a fumble. Arshon Lloyd is the eighth rushing touchdown, and the Gamecocks looking for a four game win streak, which would be their first since 2013. Rattler hit from behind. The ball is loose, and the Aggies take it right back. Bryce Anderson with his second fumble recovery of the night. Fadil Diggs. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Fadil Diggs, the true sophomore, working on Ja'Kai Moore, the left tackle, and he just wins on the right side of your screen there right away. Moore doesn't get enough depth. Thinking a power rush is coming, possibly. And Diggs beat him with speed around the outside. And this is a huge moment for Texas A&M. Replay booth obviously taking a look at it to confirm. DJ Durkin has got to love the way his defense has carried the water for A&M tonight. Yeah, the scoreboard doesn't really tell the story uh, of how well this defense has played with short fields most of the night. Here's a toss to A chain. And he is inside the 20. We've talked about what's on the line for Texas A&M. The threat of falling under 500 for a team that was top 10 in the month of September. And so the pivot point here, if they can score and get back in this game and, and mount a comeback, I don't want to say it's season saving, but there's still a lot for them to accomplish. I don't know if they can dig themselves out of a hole if they fall under 500. Oh, I think season saving is an accurate statement. Keep it on the ground here with Le'Veon Moss, and he is dragging dudes, brought down by his shirt after gain of four. Because as much as anything, it, yes, the, the wins and losses and where you can finish in the West and bowl games, et cetera, but from a mentality standpoint, after losing the game like you did against Alabama last week, to lose one, if you did tonight, that just crushes the confidence and mentality of a football team. So if anything, it's a must win because of that. to the eye formation again. It's A-Chain, and he's got a first down and a touchdown! Texas A&M fights its way back with a 15-yard run from A-Chain.
talked early in the game about motions and how to dress up this offense to affect the defense. Watch the motion here. It's going to bring the safety out of the hole. And then at the last minute, Cam Smith's going to come into the screen here, thinking he's playing man coverage. All of a sudden, he's got run responsibility, so he hesitates for a second because the motion got the defense out of position somewhere they weren't expecting to be, to be right before the snap. It's the little things that make plays work. You have a safety that was sitting there, knowing his run gap, knowing where he was supposed to be. Then you motion, he moves. Now all of a sudden, the corner that thought he was in man coverage now has a run responsibility at the safety position and hesitates for a second. And that's all H.A. needed. So when you hear me harping about motions, yeah. that's why. Because you got a safety sitting there, knowing what he's supposed to do, then you move him. And it just makes the defense so think. If the evidence is right there in front of you, why don't they do it more often? It's a great question. Or why do they get away with it? Uh, get away from it would be uh, an accurate way to phrase it. It's a great question. I think you could look at some of the youth uh, at receiver would be an easy way to do it. But there's really not an excuse because it doesn't add much more. Right? I mean, it's just it's emotion. It's one thing you're adding to the plate that can make such a difference. So if it's important, you practice it and you put it in. We see moments of it, but we don't see enough of it, I don't believe. You mentioned the youth, though, Jordan. How many coaches have we talked about that have given us different ways that they signal different things oh, yeah. into different players? I mean, we, we talked to Lane Kiffin when he was at Alabama a few years ago. They had a signaler for every position group on the field, and then sometimes an individual signaler for freshmen that yeah. were playing. I mean, you, there's different ways to get different things into players, whether you run them in, whether you signal to an individual, a position group, whatever. Yeah, and talking to James Coley down on the field, it's what he does with the wide receivers. He signals a lot into them directly, so wouldn't add a ton more just to continue to ramp up the amount of motions that they use to help this offense out. Here's Marshawn Lloyd again. And that will likely be the final play of the third quarter. Fighting Texas Aggies have shown some result tonight. Trailing by 17 early. A plethora of mistakes in the first half, but a chain and that defense have carried them here into this fourth quarter. It has been a wild ride all season long in Aggieland. They're hoping this one comes with a happy ending tonight. As the third quarter came to a close, tempers flared after this Marshawn Lloyd run and a shiver delivered by McKinley Jackson. Stogner took exception to it, got into it with Damani Richardson a little bit. The chatting continued to the point we had a host of people having a kumbaya moment on the field. I think they're just mad that we didn't bring any corn dogs for them. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about it. I got half of a turkey leg here. How about this environment? This place is wild. Second and nine. They're going to run it with Lloyd, who had to fight just to get back to the line. Tyreek Chapel to stop. He's back active for AM. Under Shane Beamer, Carolina has not lost when leading into the fourth quarter. Rattler has completed 50% of his passes tonight. He was at 70% over his previous three games, which was also the number he set while he was with Oklahoma. Here comes pressure. They pick it up. End of the perimeter incomplete. Man, fantastic coverage by Deuce Harmon over Jalen Brooks, who's back in the game. Yeah, good to see Jalen Brooks back in the game. Another really good throw. Coverage was just better. Harmon in perfect position there. Ball actually ends up getting to Jalen Brooks' chest, but that would have been a really hard one to bring down. And a great opportunity here for AM to get some good field position.
Kroger gets it away. It is a boomer of a kick. All the way back to the 15. This is Moose Muhammad. Found the sideline and gets escorted out after a 55 yard punt and 11 on the return. So you meet with Jimbo Fisher and talk to him and he talks fast. Yeah, no, we're OK. And then no big deal. Like He doesn't seem bothered by the stress that comes with the job or trying to win in the SEC. There's always an answer. Well, he's been around the block quite a bit. Also, that guaranteed money on the contract. You seen that? I mean, I think he's yeah, pretty comfortable with where he is. I think he's comfortable and confident in his own ability to turn things around and get this offense back to a place where uh, he feels it should be and really the talent that's around the quarterback position would dictate it should. In a day where backup quarterbacks have played key roles in college football, this has been all Haynes King. A chain got wrestled down and thrown down by Jordan Birch. Well, we Birch was a big hitter, little Hammond school, and he's continuing that tonight. Yeah, we talked about the playmaking ability, A chain, the cutback, but that time, nowhere to go. Credited a change forward progress at the line of scrimmage, second and ten. Low snap for King. Got it away for a first down to Evan Stewart. Stewart was a superstar at Liberty High School in Frisco, but he opted out his senior year after just three games. So I got to get ready for the next level. Watch the job by Haynes King with pressure in his face falling away, and you can't see it on that replay, but he throws this ball so early. Well before Evan Stewart's eyes even turn around. So great job by Stewart to track that ball as it was already halfway to him. Well empty the backfield. King chased and incomplete. Talking to Jimbo yesterday about Stewart only playing three games his senior year. And I said, where do you think a guy would be uh, best served getting prepared? Uh-oh. Put that story on hold. Haynes King. With the right arm dangling, and he'll say, get down, it will be Connor Wegman time. We've seen enough shoulder injuries to quarterbacks in this conference to know how serious they can be. And it Well, that was weird. I thought it would have happened on the fall. He never fell. Yeah, trying to see what happens here. It's on the throw, huh? Yeah, and it, he didn't hit his hand on a helmet or anything on the follow through. I mean, it looks like more like a baseball injury than a football yeah. injury. So a weird area for him to be grasping at, you know? Up near the front of that shoulder. Well, in the upstate today, not far from here, Cade Klubnik. Who was a one time AM recruit in some ways came off the bench and lead Clemson to a come from behind victory over Syracuse when Dabo bench DJ Uyangalale. And Wegman got his warm up tosses in. He it's a guy that uh, at least a portion of the Aggie fan base has been clamoring for. That's what happens not only when you're the backup quarterback and the offense is struggling, but when you show up with so much promise like Wegman did. Absolutely. He's so talented watching him down on the field just in warm ups. The ball jumps out of his hand. And I think you're right. A lot of people clamoring for it because they look around, they see all the freshmen that AM is playing on both sides of the football, and they yeah. go, well, if we're developing the future, let's develop the future. And Wegman is that. So we get a great. Look here in a pressure situation down three on the road at South Carolina here in the fourth quarter. What a moment to enter, huh? Yeah. No pressure, kid. Let's get out there and sling it. Superstar baseball player originally thought was he'd play for Jim Schlossnagel and the Aggies in the spring. Got to think a or South Carolina brings a little pressure early. Only bring four. Wigman gets rid of it complete. And it's a pickup of five to Donovan Green. Boy, that was a rope. Little pressure. The pocket was collapsing around Wigman there. And puts it in the perfect place for his tight end, Donovan Green, on a little stick route. Took a shot. 
Wigman's already dirty his uni one play in sign of that youth on the offensive line. Well, Wigman taking charge. Freshman trying to embrace the moment. Third and five. Complete to Stewart. And he is stopped two yards short. Ivani Reed was there. Fourth down, midfield. Looking for momentum, a pivotal game in your schedule. And they're going to bring out the punt team. And that's the right move. You got a young, true freshman quarterback. Get him to the sideline. Now start to talk through some of the plays that he's going to be comfortable with here as the fourth quarter progresses. Be really good for Jimbo and him to get together. Find two or three pass concepts that he feels really good about that Jimbo knows can work in this game plan against what South Carolina is doing and be ready to roll those here next time you get the ball. Van takes a fair catch after a 42-yard punt. It'll be a long field for Spencer Rattler in South Carolina. Dory Noka in studio. Let's take a look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. LSU remains among the SEC West teams with one conference loss, and they gave Ole Miss its first conference loss. Jaden Daniels, five touchdowns overall. LSU closes the game on a 42-3 run to rout the Rebels. How about that? So LSU controls its destiny in the West off next week, and then Alabama comes to town on the fifth. That game's looking more and more interesting. Yeah. Ryan Kelly's got that thing rolling. Good job by Jaden Daniels, one of the best running performances in LSU quarterback history. Rattler had nowhere to go with it. While we were at break, Haynes King came out of the medical tent, helmet in hand, and said, give me a ball, let me try to get loose. It did not look 100% loose. No, it didn't. It we watched that play a couple times over trying to figure out what exactly he did. Really hard to see anything, but he looks motivated. He, he's going to give it a go. I see Max Johnson in the hoodie out with a hand injury. Kind of shaking that arm a little bit. On second down, Marshawn Lloyd. Well, he is kicking up chalk. And he got blasted at the 10. What a game by Andre White. Boy, he just runs over Jalen Jones here. Watch this. Cuts to the outside and 17 Jalen Jones. Goes low, but not low enough. Monster third down here. I got to think King is going to try and go. Whether or not he's effective yeah. remains to be seen. Rattler on third and five. Changes his mind four different times and on the run, flips it out of bounds. We are seeing the talent of this AM defense came into this game 14th in the nation in pass defense. And one of the bad habits that Spencer Rattler has portrayed all the way back to Oklahoma is just leaving the pocket when he doesn't need to. Look at that. There's no reason to he runs into pressure there. He's got a clean pocket. Stay there. Be patient. Let things develop. But time and time again, we've seen maybe when he doesn't know where his eyes should go next, they go down, they look at the rush, and he feels pressure when it's really not there. Moose Muhammad over the shoulder. And nothing on the return. That was a 55-yard punt. Haynes King banged up, bloody, bruised. See if he comes out for AM in a moment. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC. Well, we have dissected this play as many times we can't try to figure out how the injury occurred. We know where it occurred to Haynes King on that throw and what it could be. It is obviously a shoulder injury of some point. He's trying to muscle his way through. What have you seen watching him? It's hard to tell. He's shaking his hand. I saw him talking a little bit to Damian Craig, quarterback coach there, trying to 
something happened with the follow through. It looked like he was he was motioning. So not sure if this doesn't look right. So Connor Wigman's back in there. Had a nice throw last drive. See if he can build on it. Wigman from Cypress, Texas, was a projected high pick in the major league draft, and there's movement on the left side. And Max Wright looks like he's All upset the ball didn't get snapped. Office, 42, this is interesting because on down. that third down, the previous drive was the first time all game I've seen AM use a clap instead of a verbal cadence. Yep. I was about to say, man, got to be careful. You got a new quarterback in there on a verbal cadence. Everything sounds different. That center's used to hearing a voice, a different cadence, a rhythm, how he says the words. Back to that verbal cadence, and right away, pre snap penalty. I'd go back to the clap. I don't, know, I don't know why you're still trying to scream it out. Make it easier. Six false start penalties tonight. Wigman pulled it back. Good! Almost got picked off. Wow, Cam Smith was able to jump the route. And he'll advise it. Still try to go that direction. There is a flag on the play. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding on the defense number nine. Second time Cam Smith has been caught. Yeah, he doesn't agree with that one, but dangerous, dangerous throw by Connor Wigman. He's going to see him work up in the pocket. Cam Smith at the top of your screen there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's holding a little bit on that route. What? Either that or. I or, think Debo Williams was the one who had a fistful of jersey. Well, then they both did because Cam looked like he was posing for the prom. Give him a boot near and a loss of a yard that time. There's Debo Williams coming in to make a play. Second down 11. Yeah, you gotta get your quarterback settled a little bit. Either a run play here or get the ball out of his hands quick to the perimeter. Quick little wide receiver slip screen or something. Try to get about half this and set up a third and six. Incomplete. Two receivers in the same spot, Muhammad and Lane. See so what play calling here with Connor Wigman and shows me they trust him. I mean, I mean they're not baby him at all. This is a it's a big progression. Two routes over the middle. A lot of pressure in and around him. And now the freshman on the road in the SEC facing a third and long. Wagman goes over the middle. This is a chain. And A-Chain gets surrounded, smothered, and covered a gain of five. I went back to the clap cadence there. Good decision as it got so loud, but South Carolina just sitting back in zone coverage with eight or nine sets of eyes on Connor Wigman there. That, that play really didn't have a chance. Now it's going to be on DJ Durkin, this A&M defense. Keep giving this offense opportunities here down three. Sky high punt. Fair catch taken by Josh Van at the 20. 8 21 to play in regulation. South Carolina leads by three. See Saturday night presented by T Mobile. Fantastic SEC Network crew with you. Cole Kublik, Jordan Rogers, Tom Hart. And we're off to Never Never Land. Last three drives, South Carolina's offense has been stymied. Yeah, just haven't been able to run the football. This defensive front for AM, all the young talent up there, and getting McKinley Jackson back has been a big boost. South Carolina's got to find a way to get things going on the ground. Milk some of this clock here in the fourth, up three. And Marshawn Lloyd might be the answer. 
Did he get brought down by a face mask? Regardless, it's a six yard gain. And South Carolina right now has Nate Atkins in there. Their tight end, best blocking tight end in there. Oh, got him by the shoulder. Yeah. Turned him around. Now South Carolina adds another tight end. This is where they need to live. Two tight end sets. Why is it so effective for them? Well, for them, they can create bigger edges, and they can also get two guys to one side like they're doing right here. Now play action. Rattler on the run early again, and he's able to complete it to Josh Van. Van ran his way open and on his way to a gain of 21. Boy, Spencer Rattler made this way tougher than he should have been. Let's see if you can see this in the middle of the screen here. He's going to have a wide open receiver. Josh Van sitting right there. Hit him. Hit him in the chest. It was there. Didn't have to escape right away, but Josh did a great job of mirroring the quarterback. Scramble drill. Stay on your level. Mirror the quarterback. Stay in phase with him, and Spencer found him eventually. Is that a phrase you would use? You are in phase with that corn dog? Uh, I was... Uh, one with the corn dog. <laughs> That's what I was. He phased it out. Yeah. It gone. Marshawn Lloyd. Great blocking from another wide receiver. And Lloyd's lost his helmet on a tackle inside the 30. What a run. Give the king his crown. Uh, we opened the game talking about gap scheme. They're going to pull a guard and bring Nate Atkins a tight end around. To lead block. And Marshawn Lloyd is running physical and running hard. And I tell you what, that's been really the difference for this South Carolina team the last two games. 110 yards against Kentucky. Well, Van into the tent. Or pardon me, Lloyd after that block down field by Van. Christian Beal Smith, starter at Wake Forest for a couple of years. He's back healthy again. And he gets wrapped up after a one yard gain. And this is where Marcus Satterfield needs to get his quarterback to milk all this play clock before he snaps the ball. It's a South Carolina team, especially in the running back room, that has great confidence in what they can do with the ball in their hands. In fact, after the Arkansas loss, both Marshawn Lloyd and Christian Beal Smith walked into Shane Beamer's office and said with all due respect we need to run the football more Beamer heard it Marcus Satterfield heard it and they got to rededicated themselves here's the reverse for Jalen Brooks Brooks found a seam 16 yard gain well, this downfield blocking for South Carolina maybe the difference in the game. Yeah, and it was Christian Beal Smith and Ja'Kai Moore on the reverse here. Their lead blocking on the backside for Jalen Brooks. But again, that ball snapped with nine seconds on the play clock. You need more. Yeah, yeah. Just, just take it all the way down, right? They're huddling up now, which is great, but don't break that huddle till 12 seconds. I think uh, another aspect, as good as AM has been. Defensively tonight, there's been a host of missed tackles, even going back to the first play of the game on the kickoff coverage unit. Juju McDowell. Four yard gain. And this is where it hurts not to have Marshawn Lloyd. Christian Beal Smith blocking on that reverse needed to spell. Juju McDowell is a heck of a running back, but he's what, 100 and 180? 108. Well, they list him at 180, so he's probably 165, 170 pounds. So down here in the red zone, they bring Christian Beal Smith back in at 5'9, 205. They need a little more physicality between the tackles. Lloyd has his helmet on. He is bounced out of the tent and is itching to come back in. Six on the play clock that time. Here's Jaheim Bell. And he is submarined after a gain of four. That will leave third and a couple. And look who's back on the field. Number one, Marshawn Lloyd. Oh 
Spencer Rattler let's said let's uh, work some more of this play clock. What are they going to run? Oh, I'd hand it to number one. And if he doesn't get it I'd hand it to him again. I think this is two down territory for South Carolina up three. Atkins in at one tight end spot. Here's Lloyd. And he is in again. Touchdown, Gamecocks. That might be a program defining eight play 80 yard drive right there. Yeah, and I mentioned the tight ends need to take over the game in the blocking schemes of this run rushing attack and they did here down the stretch. Jader has the point after block scooped up by Texas A&M chance to return it for two and that's thwarted. On that eight play 80 yard drive South Carolina ran it seven times watch Nate Atkins come here and also a big down block there by Austin Stogner both tight ends get in the mix bam right there meet you in the hole Damani Richardson second touchdown of the night for Lloyd. For yourself, how do you think I cleaned my hands after that turkey leg? <laughs> Lead is nine, 308 to play. Black point after may loom large in the next three minutes. Chance for a return. Here's a chain, and he is dropped at the 11. That's the same player, Xavier Leggett, who took the opening kickoff back 100 yards. That is a special teams monster right there. Now let's rewind and take you back to that Carolina touchdown. Well, you know, there's someone watching this touchdown that's extremely happy. It's offensive line coach Greg Atkins, who has taken a lead from the team with a medical issue. And not just because that offensive line led that drive for seven rushing plays of the eight plays for 59 yards, but that young man right there, Nate Atkins, his son, who decided to transfer over, joined the team. It's been a very difficult year and a half for the Atkins family. Coach Atkins lost his wife a little over a year ago, but he said to me yesterday in the facility, having Nate here has made it much more easy to deal with. He's a man that means a lot to this program. I think Nate's attitude obviously means a lot to this program. And you know he had a big smile on his face watching his boy absolutely clean up that Texas A&M defensive line for a game ceiling touchdown. Yeah, it is big. Nate transferred in from East Tennessee State. And we hope Coach Atkins gets well soon. Second and ten now for Connor Wickman in Texas A&M. Pressure coming. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. And that'll leave third and ten. South Carolina dialing up the pressure on the true freshman Connor Wigman. That time bringing Sherrod Green right down the gut. And pressure really all around Wigman. Another tip pass by Taka Hemingway. Eighth pass broken up by South Carolina tonight. Pressure again. Wigman swings it out. And a chain out of bounds at the 19. You may worry with the tackle. Fourth down, 246 to play, down nine. They got to go here. And Wigman actually did a really good job of getting the ball out of his hands there, setting up a fourth and realistic. Uh, 
Evan Stewart right there. Timeout, South Carolina. This is their first charge timeout of that. Shane Beamer keeping the squad fired up. We're looking at a fourth and two here. You know, we started this show talking about two teams going in the opposite direction. One with great momentum in South Carolina. They continue that early. I mean, you just have to wonder what's next for Texas A&M. They get Ole Miss coming to their place next week. We'll be there for that one. But long term, how does this all end? I don't know, uh, but in the short term, you definitely have to start developing this talent. And I think yeah. we're seeing Connor Wigman here. He's the future. I think you got to lean into that. But I, I, Jimbo has always been an offensive guy. He's always been a play caller. But I do feel like at some point they're going to need to bring in an offensive coordinator. They're going to need to bring in a guy. I, do, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if that's in the cards, but every time I hear it, and, and that is a common theme yeah. around this a and program, and I hear it weekly, my counter to that is Jimbo Fisher has faith in what he's doing. I know. Why would he farm that out to somebody because else? Because it's not working. I understood. And also, in the day of the transfer era portal, you need something that's attractive to bring guys in as well. So fourth and two, game on the line for A&M, down nine. And the freshman, Connor Wigman, keep this drive, and therefore the game alive, and that is another false start for Texas A&M. The seventh. False start on the offense, number 76. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains fourth down. Cole, how does this happen? It's tough to hold your water, Tom. I mean, you obviously are not going to hear any of the communication. The defensive line is teeing off. They know what's coming. They've got the lead. They're in a comfortable spot. It's, it's essentially putting your brain in a blender and trying to pass a math quiz. Sounds difficult. Don't go to Cole's house for Halloween. I'll choose the lobotomy. Pressure coming. Wigman backpedaling. He and it is broken up. South Carolina gets the ball back and will be on its way to a win. <laughs> Connor Wegman, four of eight off the bench in place of Haynes King, just too much. Garnet in his face. And, and that's been the story of the entire night. Edmund there finishing off. Connor Wigman causing the air and throw, but South Carolina has lived in the backfield. Obviously, we laid out the O line injuries that AM's dealing with, but this South Carolina team is aggressive up front, and it paid off tonight. Here's Marshawn Lloyd. Gain of one. We talked a lot about this South Carolina program under Shane Beamer. A lot's been said about climate and culture and some of the antics and the videos and the fun that Shane Beamer's having. I don't care what you're changing, it's changing here in South Carolina. I don't care if you call it climate, culture, whatever it is. Shane Beamer is the right man for this job. And he has absolutely turned this program upside down and has them on a trajectory that they haven't been on in a long time. You made a great point. We're talking to the field pregame about the, the effort to change the culture, to get buy-in from you guys. You lived it. You lived it at Vanderbilt when you were playing there. To do things different, to drive the enthusiasm. And how difficult that can be if you're the on the opposite side of the coin. If, if you're a taskmaster, yeah. headstrong head coach, it's just going to delay the process. Absolutely. I am a firm believer that you have to change the climate before you change the culture. And to put that in perspective, the climate is how you feel on a daily basis, yeah. the vibe, the energy of the program. If you don't get guys to have fun and buy into that climate that they're experiencing on a daily basis, it's going to be very hard, and it's going to be a long process to change the DNA culture. If you can change the climate quickly, get buy-in, that culture is going to change quicker as well. And I think that's what we're seeing here under Shane Beamer. And the, there's a lot of wins left yeah. on the schedule for South Carolina. He left all that meat on the turkey leg. I mean, that corn dog sitting on my chest right now. I mean, that's fair. 
told you I needed some tums. It's really interesting. You, you think about how to build a program and what programs need a rebuild. They needed a culture shock here. There are guys in this. Pro they're still here, but uh, two years ago, they were lacking in confidence and as a team going into games uh, thinking we're already beat. And there's a pat on the back kind of before the kick in the butt. Here's Lloyd again. Marshawn Lloyd. And he's out of bounds to stop the clock. You know, I was at one of Jimbo's first practices, and they had a defensive back who was uh, not doing what Jimbo wanted him to do during practice. And he gathered the entire, he kicked the kid off the field, and he gathered the entire team, and he said, you want to transfer? Then leave. Meet me after practice. I will sign whatever papers you need. And he established early on that it was his program, and they're going to run it his way. Everybody does it differently, and this was an a and program that didn't need a rebuild. They needed refinement after the Kevin Sumlin years. Yeah, and I think a different scenario, right? Yeah. Jimbo came in with a national championship under his belt. He can come in and demand it be a certain way, and you go, I'm going to do that because this guy's done it. Yeah. And you want to do that. I think it's very different the way a Shane Beamer, as a first-time head coach, has to come into a role like that. So not one's right and wrong. You just approach it different ways. South Carolina held on fourth down with 104 to play. AM's gonna get the ball back. Preseason number six each of the last two years. This was after the great run in 20. And they were worried that he might take the LSU job, so they tapped some years onto the back of his contract. The last play, the game clock did not run. Please reset the game clock to 101, 101. Thanks to Wheels Up helping make Thank travel you. easier. This morning, Jordan was in Baton Rouge and doing gymnastics routines. And then you come here and you eat a corn dog. It's called balance, Tom. Uh huh. Life Look balance. it up. Look it up in a dictionary. Sometimes you work out and sometimes you stuff your face. I like to do both in a matter of 12 hours. Just don't make me eat a corn dog and then go off the vault. <laughs> no. that, that won't end well for the foam pit. <laughs> need, Donovan Green. I'll need a deep clean. <laughs> it won't be a foam pit after you'd be like that. Those toddlers in the uh, ball pit at McDonald's. Under a minute to play. Aynum fell behind by 17. They hadn't come back from the 17 point deficit since Johnny Manziel's last game in Atlanta against Duke. We have multiple flags now. Looks like South Carolina had 12 men on the field. So AM at Kyle Field next Saturday night with Ole Miss coming to town after Ole Miss got shellacked by LSU today. That was cold. Did you see that one coming? LSU put 45 on the board. I did not. I, I knew that offense was finding its rhythm and finding its way. Illegal substitution on the defense. That penalty has been declined. The game clock will start on the snap. But I'm wondering if maybe we found out more about the Ole Miss defense than we actually did the LSU offense. Well, that's but, uh, fair. Jaden Daniels ran for 121 yards and three touchdowns on 23 carries. Very balanced attack. Now field and incomplete rush on Stewart. Interesting that we're in this conversation before the Haynes King injury talking to Jimbo about Evan Stewart opting out and he made it clear. I, I don't know his exact scenario in the situation in high school. He said, but I would always advise guys play ball. That's how you get better. You, you, you don't get better in yes incrementally in practice in training. But you got to be on the field and you got to play ball to get better. And he opted out after three games of high school, senior year. Man came free and they set up the screen to A chain. A chain got a block downfield and he dances out of bounds. I think you could take that same principle into forecasting what they're going to do with Connor Wigman. Right? He's the most talented guy they have on their roster as a thrower. 
You're not going to get better sitting on the bench. Yeah. A and M's going to be sitting at three and four. Why not? Like I mean, it, and, and look, Haynes King played valiantly tonight. He was under a ton of pressure, did a ton of good things. He was the starter at the opening of last season, then had the injury. He was the starter this season. Job was given to Max Johnson. Max got hurt. I, I think we know what to expect out of Haynes King. Not for better or for worse. It just is what it is. So sitting at three and four, is this not a Connor Whitman's team now? No. I, I thought with the off week that would have been something right. that Jimbo hey, could have been Ian, motivated. This is their second charge. Yeah, out I of agree. The half. And obviously It'll he believes in Haynes King. Out. Please reset the game clock to 22 seconds. Cole, does A&M look any different to you after an off week? Maybe a little bit more fresh at certain spots. They have a little bit more depth on the defensive line, getting a couple bodies back, but I haven't seen anything schematically that looks dramatically different, no. But Jimbo told us, Tom, you, you asked him in the meetings. You know, what, what did you use the bye week for? What can you add? What did maybe you subtract? And fundamentals. Fundamentals. That was it. We went back fundamental practices. We worked blocking, tackling, hat placement, hand placement, routes, when to break routes off, timing, rhythm. So it, they felt like it was a kind of go back to basics bye week. Twenty two seconds left. Aggies would need a miracle to try and come back in this one. Wigman lets it go down the sideline towards the end zone and out of bounds incomplete. You'll keep Brown. We got flags on the field and a heavy police presence as well apparently. Did you pay for the corn dog? Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense number six. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot and it carries an automatic first down. Let's talk to Hemingway. All right, so down nine, 17 seconds left. You take the field goal here. Bond's already hit from 51. Take the field goal, just a few seconds run off the clock, try your outside kick. Seems to be the, it's the only way you're going to have a chance to win, right? Got to get gotta get three on the board somehow. Unless you're playing for a pair of sevens. Here's a shot. And stopped at the six is you'll keep Brown. Pick up 13, timeout taken. But again, that's the reason why you maybe would have taken the field goal there because with the six seconds running off the clock there now they'll take it. now if you take it getting an onside kick you probably don't have the arm to reach the end zone after just an onside kick you need yeah. one play after that so that's why you kind of want to save that six seconds for the other side of the onside kick as opposed to now but either way they put a couple seconds back on the clock yeah. either way got to get three somewhere so We'll try to do it this way and then hope for an onside kick. Twenty four yard attempt bonds made for fifty one and twenty six already. And remember South Carolina's extra point was blocked on their last touchdown and we got movement up front. False start on the offense, number 34. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Eight false starts for AM today. Yeah, most of it have been cadence related that time. South Carolina defensive lineman TJ Sanders just jumped a gap over to the right, caused a flinch by the right guard there. As you see right there, did it again. So make it 28. Good hold. Good kick. The ball's going to end up at five points. So 10 seconds left. Walk me through the anatomy of a successful onside kick. Oh, you, you got to get a bounce, right? I mean, you want to hit one of those that's hard enough that it gets a big bounce on that second one and uh, play ball. No. Go grab it. I mean, there's not much to it. You just 
go try to hit somebody and see if it bounces your way. Not likely. Thank you, Greg Campbell. The last A&M onside kick came at Mississippi State in October of 2014. Now you guys see the inner workings of our booth. Chris Capo nice enough to step out of the shot. Remember when you used to be able to do that one where you just kicked it really hard, one bounce yep. into the turf and then it hit way up high? You can't do that anymore. And you could also have your front line blow them yeah. away from yeah, the ball do in that. great space. Yeah. Hey, taking uh, all the fun out of onside kicks. What are these we were guys going doing on over camera, here? did we? Hey, uh, Bears in town, and apparently the circus is I too. I was going to see if you wanted a turkey leg. This thing's been sitting there for a while. Probably don't want that. Uh, let's be honest, it's probably been sitting across the street for a while too. Yeah, you're right. All right, here we go. See what this thing does on the second bounce here. They're going to come near side. Oh, oh he got it! And it'll be dead at the 50 yard line where it was recovered. Jordan Matthews finds it. 10 seconds left. AM with a shot. That was a perfect onside kick. Watch this second bounce here. There's one, two. King right Davis. up and over. Sorry, it was the second kicker. And at the crossover, he's the one that connected. Right over Leggett, who's six threes. That was just a perfect bounce. Wow. All right. All right, 10 seconds left. You get time for two. You get zero timeouts. Can you run a quick out? You can, but like they took a second off. It's now nine. Wigman's got the arm to okay. get it. He only he'll after scrambling around a little bit, he'll only need about 55, 58. But yes, you would like to get a little bit of this up at the top of your screen. If you could throw a quick out, pick up six or seven yards. You get a roll. Should be the last play likely. Uncorks it deep. It'll be short of the end zone, and it is incomplete. There is one second remaining. DQ Smith knocked it down. What did we learn about Connor Wigman's arm strength on that play? Well, here's what I didn't like about that. Like, he's not going to have the arm strength on a full sprint to the right. And if you're sprinting him to the right, those three guys that were running vertical cut one of them off at 10 yards. Yeah. No one was there. That's how and you then pick. you could be at the 30-yard line with two totally. seconds, three that seconds changes left. what you're able to do. Man. Well, here we go. He's going to get another shot. Evan Stewart to the near side. Boyd's pressure once. Got hit as he threw. And South Carolina will survive. Bam, Martin Scott lives up to his name. 